Hello, welcome back. My name is Vartan Badalian, Director of Transportation here at GreenBiz, and welcome back to our live stream. Denise, thank you so much for being with me. Thank you, thank you for having me. Of course, we have Denise Melville, BMW North America, Director of Sustainability. Who better to talk to than everything on EVs and circularity, right, and EV manufacturing? Um, I really want to hone our conversation down on those kind of fine points. How do you manufacture an EV in a more sustainable way, the circular economy, and all that? So to kick it off to you, I'm curious to hear, because BMW's ethos for moving forward, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, is that the future of automotive is going to be circular. In like four to five clear steps, can you action out for anyone in the product manufacturing space who's considering or manufacturing products, what does it take to be circular and what should companies be thinking about? First of all, you have to design circularity in. Yep. If you don't start with that, it's going to be very difficult at the end of the process to, to manage it. So that is absolutely what we do in terms of EVs and combustion engines too. So everything that we do at BMW is, is not only applied to EV, it's applied across our design range and our, all of our series. So design it in first. Secondarily, take out... Uh, pollution and waste out of your manufacturing process. That is something that every organization can do. It's not specific to automotive. But if, if you look at examples there, every single one of our plants across the world is run on renewable energy. Mm -hmm. BMW has its largest plant here in the US. I don't know whether people know that. We export more vehicles than any other manufacturer in the world mm -hmm. from the US. And that is 100% powered by, actually, methane gas. Uh, wow. So take waste out is uh, the second part. The third part is really around collaboration. So we cannot do this alone. So you have to build partnerships with your suppliers, with the downstream recyclers, with other manufacturers that are doing things as well as you are and collaborate. I think the, the, the fourth thing is really to focus in on the, where you can put the highest value in the recyclable material. What I mean by that is put it back into the market at its highest value if you can remanufacture a part. So I'll give you an example. Many of the parts that come off vehicles when they go to be serviced at a BMW dealer come back to us mm -hmm. and they get remanufactured as new and put back into the supply chain. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that, and it's a cheaper option. So they should think about that and ask about it next time. So yeah, they're the four always, things really. It's always impressive because the automotive sector has been almost like the OGs of a circular economy based around repurposing, selling parts, uh, second life of a vehicle. The used market is the largest market of vehicles, more than the new market of vehicles, right? Yeah, it's, it's big. Yeah. 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 So, what are you learning? What does it take to build in circularity into a traditionally linear manufacturing process, typically? I think uh, from an automotive manufacturer perspective, you have to think about everybody that is involved in that process. Mm -hmm. So it starts with the design process, then it moves into, uh, you know, and you're thinking about the raw materials that are going to go into that vehicle. And as an example, again, um, that lovely i5 you saw Christopher Walken driving in the uh, ad for the Super Bowl this Sunday, that has entirely secondary aluminum in, within its body. It has carpets that are made from recycled fishing nets. So we are already thinking in the design at every single component of a vehicle. And, but not, not to stop there. Then we have to look right at the dealer side of it. What are they doing? How are they recycling? What are they doing to support us bringing back those parts from a, from a used vehicle or an end-of-life vehicle? So we have to think about the entire process from raw material manufacturing right through to our dealer partners. So it's highly complex yeah. and very collaborative. Are you noticing from a dealer perspective, consumers having an interest in this new innovative approach to manufacturing vehicles and selling vehicles? Do, do consumers care? about the circular aspect of a vehicle, the BMW vehicle? I, to be quite honest, not enough. Okay. Um, they, the customers that understand it, that are coming in to talk to us about EVs, they get it. It's, it's a challenge, 
to actually convert a US customer from their V8 to an EV or to, to think about what's in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But actually in a previous role at BMW, I was head of training. And one of the things we put in place was uh, uh, regional product trainers who go out and talk specifically to support our dealers in enabling them to talk about sustainable uh, aspects of the car, the EVs themselves, how they can be charged in a renewable way, and to support the dealers in mm -hmm. bringing that to our customers. So that's something that no other manufacturer has on the automotive side, and it's really important to me. So what are you, what are you seeing moving forward for BMW? What are you most excited about? A couple of things that are going to be innovating or adding into your vehicles moving forward, or your supply chain manufacturing process that's circular. Oh, there are so many. I could. Give it, give it, give it I, all of I them, knew please. you were coming to, <laughs> to this, and it's like, okay, where do, where do I focus? Yeah. I, I think I'm really excited about the fact that we utilize secondary aluminum within our vehicles. So the uh, those of you that have seen the iX, the i5, the i4 they utilize secondary aluminum, which is not only secondary, it's actually created using entirely renewable energy. We do that in Dubai, and uh, that's used in all of our factories. Um, I would say the use of uh, recycled plastics in our vehicles too. The fact that we're taking uh, fishing nets and ocean plastic and turning that into the carpet that you you have in those vehicles. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're working with suppliers, not only on, an, on the vehicle, but think about the things that come out of the vehicle, the oil, mm -hmm. re-refining oil that comes out of that vehicle, and it can be re-refined eight times mm -hmm. and still be the same quality it was originally. So it's all of those aspects. I mean, I'm gonna talk later on a panel, but I'm really excited about our tire recycling process that we will put in place. Tell me more about that. Um, so our dealers and BMW will recycle every single tire that comes off a of BMW. No other manufacturer is doing it. Today, I don't know whether, again, the audience know, but 380 million tires are sold in the US every year. Wow. And around 10 to 20 percent end in landfill. Can you believe that? I mean, that's well over 30 million tires. They're clearly so, avoidable. Clearly avoidable. It can be done. So we're putting in place a process whereby not one BMW tire, whether it comes off at a dealer or a factory or a used vehicle, will go into landfill in future. And I'm so excited about that. It's going to be such a, an initiative. And that's amazing. It'll be done by the end of the year. That's yeah. amazing to hear. So I mean, this is my final question for you then. Because you're doing something so innovative right there, What's your call to action to the rest of the automotive industry? What should they be doing around this kind of circular economy push? I think it's not okay just to put electric vehicles on the streets. It's not okay to do that. Everybody has to look at their ICE, their internal combustion engine vehicles, their EVs, and look at where they initially, where they're going to recycle, how they're going to remanufacture, and work together on platforms that we can share with our suppliers to work, to move forward together. I, I think collaboration is crucial, but start at the beginning with your raw materials, with the design. That's what I would say, and then work forward. Well, thank you so much, Denise. I really appreciate your time and giving all these insightful uh, insights from BMW's perspective. Uh, we'll be right back, so stay tuned.